Small thing, there is no need to rush your shot in an eco round. The reason being, and this is more of your, this is your first mental conversation. When you're on eco, I want you to work under the expectation that you're going to lose that round. Statistically, it's not in your favor. So when you think I'm most likely going to lose this round, it changes the way that you play, it changes your expectation, and it changes your fear factor. Because now mm. you're more willing to do shit, right? Because like, what, well, I'm gonna lose anyway. What's, you know, no big deal. Your mindset when you're on eco is to think of BAM, bare ass minimum. Now bare ass minimum is my small victories I can get in this round that can make me win the future round. So what are some small victories we can go for on this round that we can say as little check marks and keep ourselves in a good mental? What can you do? We can damage the, re the eco. Yeah, frags and, yeah. and damage as well. This is a really yeah. big point. If you shoot them in the leg, that's a thousand dollars worth of value because they have right. to rebuy their armor. You could, if you're on uh, attack, you can plant the bomb. That's money, okay? Mm -hmm. On both sides, you can collect orbs. That builds into your alts. When you build into your alts, you start winning rounds, especially with you. You have your operator, you literally can lock down B-site by yourself. This is all stuff you wanna be thinking about. What's my small victories? We start thinking like that, you start taking fights with more patience. For example, this fight here, I want you to watch this. You're not even close. You're not even close. That wall, <laughs> that wall will never be the same. All right, sad wall. <laughs> So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I would rather see you hit that leg and get the value of taking away Reyna's armor, okay? That way they have to rebuy. The big factor here is take your time and relax. Realize the situation for what it is. When you're gonna take that fight, deep exhale out. So breath in, and then you're about to take the fight, exhale out, you know the fight's coming. You're moving into a threat area. Want to get coached? Join this Discord. We have free and paid coaching options. Can't wait to see you there. Enjoy the video. I like the breath you took there. It, there's also a sense of pressure, potentially from that breath. We talk about breath control a lot in this. When you're about to take a fight, I want you to exhale out. You can even over-exaggerate it a little bit. Because if you're holding on to your breath, you'll notice your heart rate goes up. When your heart rate goes up, emotions start going through the, the roof. That's when we start lifting. So dealing with pressure is a big factor, especially if you want to go pro, because you're going to be doing this on stage at some point, right? With a thousand people yelling your name. That shit's, that shit's got pressure. So you have to learn how to deal with the pressure through breathing. We need to learn to talk while we're fighting. Here's your first bit of homework. When you go into your death match, I want you to action calm everything. You're going to be calling out everything that you're doing, pressing your push to talk key, all that good stuff, and taking fights. This is a universal skill. And there's some people on TikTok and YouTube that disagree with me on this. They're like, well, if you do one thing, it takes away from another thing. And that's what Hujan says too. And I'm like, no, you just, you develop the skill, right? You learn how to speak while you're, you're playing the game. Because all this calm is important. This jet could be moving up, knowing that the planter's here and the other person's right here. There's no threat. So they can easily be catching a timing right now. And it's all based off of a calm that you make. You ever had a situation where your teammates just suck really bad? Has that ever happened? Well, here's the thing. What if I told you you're directly responsible for that reason, right? That they suck. It's because of how you communicate. Now, the reason why I say that is that it's not always your fault, but if you can take ownership, then you're in the driver's seat towards you getting better. So if you can find a way to say, okay, how do I take accountability for the reason why my jet sucks? Did I say everything I needed to in that moment? to make them make the right decision. Right. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with this play, right? In fact, mm. at your rank, there's no such thing as right or wrong as long as you have the right intention. Intention is everything. Right. So let's break this round down. We won the last round. What are they gonna be on this round? They're gonna be on eco, right? We're mm. gonna be on an eco round. They have to invest in this round. What kind of fights do they want to take? Long, medium, or close, short? Close, close, close. Right. Close range. Okay. So everything is risk and reward in this game, okay? Right. I would say that there is higher risk playing up here against an eco than it would be the offset. Now, if you're on round number three and you decide to do this when they have gun rounds, you want close range fights. Generally, the headhunter can be long range as well, right? That's one of the major things. You basically have a built-in guardian, which is insane. but 
you generally want to be closer range in those fights. So I would say that in this round in particular, I would love to see one yellow instead and taking that longer range fight. Even with the headhunter, it's fine, okay? This could be something that you save for later on because these guys have brains at this rank. They're going to remember things. So if you catch them on this round, the value of that catch versus being on an eco round is not as high. So you can flip a thrifty round later on using this at a particular time versus revealing that you're going to do it earlier, right? Mm -hmm. When there's little value, where you should, in theory, win this round, okay? So this is a round where I prefer you on yellow. There's nothing wrong with what you're doing. It's just you have consequences to those actions being revealed early if you do get caught here. There's a small thing you do here I want you to pay attention for. When you get a kill and you're on defense, I want your automatic response to be S key. What that means is you back up, okay? Mm. You moved forward right here. That's a trade in this rank, okay? We don't give up trades. We always want to try to find a way to single out the fights back up, all right? Mm. Good job. Okay, so see right there, for example, you get this kill and then immediately your response is, I'm looking for my TikTok clip, okay? <laughs> you move forward right away. The protocol for you, Chamber, is if I miss the first bullet, I TP. It's always one shot, one and done. The reason why is that if this is tens, you don't get a second chance. So this is where for you, when you get a kill, I need you to slow down and freeze. You'll hear Boaster talk about this all the time. Boaster from Fnatic. You get a kill, yeah. slow down and freeze. Think about what you're going to do next. I would rather see you slow down and freeze and then get killed for slowing down and freeze because you took your extra time to think about it. And then over time, that slowing down will speed up because you'll automatically have the process in and what you want to do next. It's kind of like you're thinking five steps ahead, mm. right? you'll get to that point where it's just like, you're not even, it's just autopiloting your five steps ahead where it's like natural. All the decisions have been made properly and you know what you're doing. But right now you have to kind of slow down and think about it a little bit. You're probably gonna see a couple ranks drop because you're starting to open your mind up to different possibilities. But the amount of leaps and bounds you will make as a result of you taking that extra second over time will be astronomical. Beep, 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 beep. Okay, B B B B B B B is not a good call. You know there's one B, or they're on site on B. That would be good too. You could have taken more time. And thinking about from their perspective, they're worried about here. They didn't clear out yellow either. Yeah. So they're worried about there, right? They're not worried about here, obviously, but they are worried about someone swinging out here. I think the bigger factor that we need to consider too is this, because you took a very committed swing here and you didn't need to. So it comes back to D-I-N-T again. And the problem yeah, is, yeah. is that if your heart rate, if we're checking it right now, your decision making here is I hear person, I kill person. What's the worst case scenario if they get on site? They plant and then what do they do? You can just retake with five. You have a minute and 20. Yeah. If you hold off the snowman and you continue to carry this staging ground, which is a really hard thing to like wrap your mental around. Cause I always used to think, Find person, kill person, right? But in this game, you don't necessarily need to kill to win. You don't have to. You could be back here, hold this space, and then your team comes back and you just win off that, off sheer numbers. Mm. But it's hard to wrap your head around that because you are so ingrained with frag, 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 okay? Yeah. The more the more impactful piece here is can I control back sight and can I, can, can I prevent them from actually pushing into snowman like that uh, Sage did there. The way I like to think about it is the defenders are worth two points. You might've heard me talk about this before. And then the attackers are worth one point. Everyone has a life. So that's worth one point. The difference between defenders and attackers is that they don't hold position on the map. Sure, they can have map control and all that good stuff, but that's a different thing. They, You hold position. So let's say for example, your Viper was to die really early into this round. Look at where your team is. That forces everyone to move, okay? To be able to make mm -hmm. up for her fuck up. That's why I say like first 10 seconds of the round, if you die on defense, it's like a big fuck you to your entire team because you're forcing them to now change their plan and move around. So you lose position, so POS, and you lose your life. So in that case, mm. you're worth two points. 
As soon as the leer gets thrown, I would TP. Get the fuck out of here, okay? Run, 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 run. Yeah. As soon as that rain leer comes in, I'm thinking about how do I live longer, that's all. I'm looking at this time code, I'm like, okay. I got lots of time here, I don't need to do anything more. Especially the fact that, and this would have been a fraction of a second, but you got the first kill already, I think. So you're good. So one drill that I recommend that you do with a partner, you do 1v1, okay? Mm. And you set up a TP, let's say for example on mid. So if we go to ascent mid and we place a TP, what you would do is you would start here and what you're gonna do is you're gonna have the enemy team, they'll play anywhere in mid. And your goal is to cross their place everything properly. If you don't cross their place it properly and you see them, you hit your TP button and then you reset the thing. So you have it back here or whatever. So you go up here. Oh, I see I see brimstone, but my cross replacement wasn't on. TP. Reset the fight. Now he goes somewhere else. You go, okay, let's go again. Oh, I got the fight. Perfect. Boom. Cross replacement was good. Dead. Let's reset the fight. Okay, go somewhere else. Until it becomes natural for you. Okay, so the role of the lurker and the role of the anchor. You might have heard me talk about this. So anchors and lurkers. So typically lurkers are something that you will see on attacker side but there are lurkers in defense as well the number one rule for both of these roles is to exist you must stay alive you stay alive right. you have value okay so what happens is you reveal yourself okay so you get this kill let's say there's two people here what they know is that there's probably more people here and that you're solo so naturally what they're going to do is they're going to push the weaker half when they're pincered in they should be doing that anyway so you need to exist here and live. So the Sage knows you're here, and then I think the jet goes in and dies like two of them. I think that's what happens here. One enemy. Yeah, so we know that both are here because Viper is just killed him, and we hear the drone. So he's gonna say two are on site. So naturally for the Sage, she's gonna try to find you because that's a 1v1. So you need to exist here. This is where mid-round TPs would be great. Toss one down right here, right? That way, if you do take a fight, you can at least get out of it. Okay, so why is this angle bad on this round? Is it bad? Yeah. Very bad. For the reason that you're aiming for right now. Jet oh, knives. I, I'm yeah, jet knives, yeah. Yeah. On top of that, Rain has already killed you on this angle, right? So you got to remember that they have a long memory, right? The reason why this round is bad is because you're not assessing what alts they have. So had you known this was a possibility, you would have been way back. You could even be, or you could be right here on the pipe, waiting for it to jump up. This is the protocol. If you're not assessing, you're guessing. Okay. If you're not assessing, you're guessing. You're just assuming guessing. everything's going to go well. You have to assess. That comes with your pre-round routine. You press tab. Take a look at what is going on in that uh, scoreboard, and you'll give you a better understanding of what you need to do. Okay. Okay. So you're in a one v five situation right now. Remember, bare ass minimum, what can we look for? What can we do? Can we get some frags here? Our mindset should be not, oh my god, it's all on me. All on me. To be able to help my team. Right? It's like, no, no, no. They put you in the spot. So now you have no... There's literally nothing you do here that can lose you any value. Literally nothing. Right? And this is where the mindset is like, okay, let me just peek this properly. Right? Let me just like really get a good peek out here. Um, let me make sure that I hit my shot. You know, if I hit the leg, that's value. Bare ass minimum again, right? What's going mm -hmm. on here? Are we upset? <laughs> Checking my blood pressure. So your blood pressure? <laughs> Checking the, the temperature on my face. See, I need a thermometer. If this was a gun round, you're warranted in having an emotional response. If you're on an eco round, I don't want to see that at all, right? Mm -hmm. That's the way I want you to think about it. Because again, if you're on eco, this is like, whatever. We're supposed to lose anyway, right? Yeah, no dart here. So have to be careful to push up. They could be in nest now too. Because there's no dart supporting you. Good. You're aware. You should put your TP down now. I would put your TP down right here. And then I would, I would start challenging this site and just hold this line. Yeah. So TP down, first of all. Had you had TP down, you would have felt a little bit better about that, I think. On top of that, I'd rather you peek from pipes to clear the top angle first. Once you know that that angle is good, then you're okay. If we go back here, this jet had an op before. So we should already have secured in our head 
a TP to be able to avoid things. I would rather you jump peek. If you identify the jets on that spot, I want you to go somewhere else. Do not challenge the op. It makes no sense to have a queen fight a queen, okay? Mm -hmm. Queen v queen makes no sense. I want you to kill all the pawns, okay? So when you said when you said I should challenge the light, in, in my case, where should I go exactly? Because uh, Okay, so have in mind that Jet could be anywhere. He could be B, B right. main or A main. Yeah, so you need info. You need info. Right. Um, so who is the primary info ga gatherer on your team? Sova. Sova. Now there's two particular counters on your comp that can help you deal with an operator and get you in a better position. What are the What are the counters? So Sova's one of them. But what utility are we looking for? Reina? Reina Drone? Yeah, Drone, Reina's, no, the okay. Reina's the other one. Reina's the other one. Okay, perfect. Yeah. And then what does Reina do to counter an op? Lear. Lear. Lear is mm. dynamite against an operator. Dynamite. That's the, the, the best counter possible. Mm -hmm. So if you want to op A, get one of these two to come with you. It's like, hey, Reina, can you Lear this while I op this angle? And that way you know that you're good. Okay? And if the op mm -hmm. appears, then you just go to the opposite side or go somewhere else okay if you're on your own and they're not listening to you which is going to happen this is where you should jump spot first i would jump spot make sure my tp is down guarantee a way to get out if that operator's there so we can challenge somewhere else um you didn't you didn't take into account the alt again i think here get out of my way now the other factor is your teammate darts so the only threat you have is someone being on pipes if they updraft mm -hmm. or near that area because mm -hmm. all close range is taken care of. So there's no sense in you having a crosshair placement there if mm -hmm. you are aware that Jet Pop knives and you were aware mm -hmm. for most of this game, but you slept on this round. This is a great play, but this is also something that you could have potentially worked with. So it comes down to that prep for knowing when the alts are coming in and what to do with those alts, which I know you know how to do. You're just, you're just taking time here to, you might not, be realizing it and i think it all comes yeah. from pre-rounding and setting up your pre-round so you pre-round you press tab and you ask yourself what do they have what can they do all that good stuff and you're prepared for it ahead of time and i'd rather you go even if you're wrong i'd rather you go with some sort of assumption because if you go into the round with an assumption you have some sort of plan versus just going in blind and hoping for mm -hmm. the best what i like hearing from you is that you're giving me common knowledge but it seems to me that it's not too common at all, you know what I mean? It, it's interesting too though, man, because I've done this before. So this is a graph. And if we're to put iron here, and we're to put radiant here, this is the graph in terms of skill. Mm. Okay. Ooh. Now let's go to tier three, because that's even higher. Same thing. Tier three is in radiant, it's pretty much the same fucking thing. Tier two. Tier one. I, I'm running out of space on my monitors, okay? Yeah. That's literally the fucking difference. That's between you and a pro right now. You're over here. <laughs> and the difference here is macro. And macro is the decisions that you make that affect the whole, all of the game. Micro mm. is the decisions that you make that affect you. These are mm. a lot easier for you to identify. So a micro mm. decision that you made that was a mistake was you not looking at the jet. A macro decision would be like what we talked about with the operator and how it affects the entire game when you take a shot. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? And that's like a yeah. very, very tiny macro that basically could be m micro. A macro decision is kind of like how you did that fake play on pistol round. The weird thing was that you did that without info about how they like to rotate. They could have just mm -hmm. sat on site the entire time, but you made a really good decision on that. And if you kept doing that in this half, you probably would have won very easily. You know, a macro would be looking at the potential alts that we have and how we can use that pairing together to find wins and win conditions. Win conditions are no something way. that people sleep on. If you watch my Mahujan series, I literally talk about it all the time. I'm like, he's missing an opportunity to call for an alt here. It's kind of strange that he's not calling for this alt. He wins for free, he gets the alt. And if he wins this round, then they put the other team on eco, they win two rounds off of it. That's really the differential between an Immo and Radiant player. It's not that big, but it's those little things that you're not noticing that lose you games. Oh no. Oh God. Holy fuck. How did you feel so confident to do that? <laughs> Holy shit.
<laughs> Was there all are they all revealed? Am I missing something? Oh my god. Where are all three? One. How are we not dead? I thought we were gonna get fucking pushed on that spot. One flank. There he is. Last player standing. <laughs> Slow down, brother. Holy shit. How are you gonna help the mid round TP? What are we gonna do to do that? Make that better. Assess. That's all I want you to focus Assess. on. Assess. If you even wanna in your next VOD verbalize what they have, mm. that could be a good start. And then we can have conversations about that. So you don't necessarily need to know all the answers right away, but at least if you can say, if you identify in your next VOD, like, okay, Sova has alt and Jet has alt and Rain has alt. And you just say that, so I know that you've been looking at it. That's great. Mm. That's like stage number one. And then stage number two will be understanding, okay, so what's the consequences of, of Sova having alt? What does that mean? Mm -hmm. Well, if they're on attack, they have a post plant set up. Okay, great, awesome. Yeah. That's like stage number two. We can do that week number two. Right now, I just want you to identify. 